What is up dudes? Welcome back to the channel. A lot of stuff going on lately and one of the biggest things is I'm entering into a new little micro skiff platform based on this bad boy and this bad boy. But that's for another video. For this video, I wanted to reflect on a past project, which is the Boat Rover. Boat. A lot of you guys loved that, and I kind of acted like I loved it a lot, and there were maybe times where I did, but I really kind of wanted to break down bit by bit what it was and what I thought about it. So this is my review of Boat's Rover platform. Let me start off by saying that what drew me into the Rover probably is the same thing that drew you into the Rover. Being able to kind of surf this little board and kind of, kind of carve around creeks and be able to jet around to spots quickly and cheaply, especially in high prices. But there's more to that than this. And while it did function well, it fished a lot of good stuff, like very easily, including grass flats, mud banks, oyster beds, mud flats, all kind of stuff. So it did a good job. And it has a lot of attachments and things to kind of like make your journey a little easier and a little bit more comfortable, like the bucket rack, the cooler, the grab bar, the transom, the motor, etc., etc. Now, while there were a lot of good times, there were a lot of things I didn't like about the rover, including just kind of like logistics, motor, weight, coating, materials, customer service. We'll get on into all these things, but start out knowing that the thing is a fishing machine. It was made for fishing and um, it does it quite well and served me very well while I had it. That being said, back to boat. This was a small company, and is a small company, founded by two guys. One's Corey Cooper, the other one's name is Magda. They went to college, they got degrees, and then they kind of uh, went their own route in Destin, Florida and made this company boat. They had a lot of aspirations to be paddle boarders and watermen and really didn't like the products available. So they formed their own company. In order to make your mark on the world, you often have to make a voyage from the familiar into far off places. And one thing Boat does really well is their marketing. Everything's on point, the photos are crisp, the websites are polished. These journeys are necessary to discover our true selves. We have developed a platform that will help you take that journey. We call it Rover. And every product has premier photography, every detail and aspect of it to make it just better looking and better appearing to the customer. And they do have great products. Their paddle boards are one off and very highly revered in the world of stand up paddle boarding. I mean, even the surf style. But we're here to talk about the Rover. The Rover is their 14 foot micro skiff, comes in at 105 pounds, 40 inches long, 12 inches deep. I mean, it is a slab, 100 pound paddleboard. But that's not all. Attached to that on this platform is a motor, and you can pick whichever motor you want. Um, if you want to have less on the board, they recommend a six horsepower with an interior gas tank. If you want to get a little bit further, or you want to go a little bit faster, a 9.9 .9 is what they recommend. I know a couple dudes have the 15, but like, I mean, talk about dangerous and overpowered. Nothing in my mind ever made me want a 15 horsepower. The thing would fly. I already had trouble handling the 9.9, especially with a passenger on, but we'll get to that in a second. I wanted to start with the hull, and one of the biggest things that uh, turned the page for me was the gator shell. Now this is advertised as an ABS plastic coating, plastic coating combined with ballistics technology to create a, you know, crazy, super strong, super uh, dense, but also light material. And it's coated on the outside 
of many paddle boards. And even uh, the surf company Bic, they make surfboards and they coat their boards in the same stuff. Now, boat might call it gator shell, but this is essentially a plastic coating on top of fiberglass or carbon fiber or epoxy or whatever the hell the company wants to do. So, that was my one big stipulation. That stuff flaked off like crazy. Now, did it flake off just in, under normal wear and tear? No, this was more along the lines of like docks, oyster beds, and the trailer. So these were three areas where a significant impact were had on the gator shell, and I experienced flaking when this stuff was put under pressure. I then installed a gator guard under keel guard and went to reposition it after laying it down and the entire coating started coming off. Now, say what you want about industrial strength adhesives, but I don't care what it is. If a coating is coming off of your paddleboard, that is just like the number one indicator that it's probably not gonna last long. But there's more. <laughs> Go, 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 go. Yep. Yep. Good job. <laughs> On top of the 100 pound plastic coated hull that was $3,500, it is now MSRP at 4500 The website says $44.99 for just the haul. That's no motor, no grab bar, no coolers, nothing. So to get it out the door, it's $4,500. And I think they offer free shipping, which is like whatever, but post-pandemic rovers are definitely more expensive than pre-pandemic rovers. Since we're on the topic of haul, I wanted to address something they said on the website. Under the outline, Angler's Best Friend, website reads, while under power, it turns on a dime and maneuvers like a dream. And swapping to paddle once you get to shallow waterways lets you stalk your catch wherever it may lead you. Now let me just stop you right there. The keel in the front of the boat has never inhibited turning more than I've ever seen on any other skiff. Maybe it's because the back is so flat, or maybe it's because the keel is so sharp. It goes from flat to completely vertical keel in the front. I'll do some close-up B-roll of that but there was nothing about turning on a dime that that thing did. And I'll say this again later, but on one very sharp turn I did with my Tohatsu 9.9, .9, it started chewing up the hole with the metal prop, but it turns on a dime. So it also says sandbar champion, it drafts three inches, the micro rover skiff allows. The Rover Micro Skiff allows you to get into those hard to reach places that other boats won't allow, carve out a quiet spot in places that no one else can reach. True, and yet like many skinny boats can go just as shallow and like canoes go even shallower than the Rover. So like with two people on the Rover, that thing is not drafting three inches. So I just want to let you know that like not everything you're reading on this site is completely true. So like I had a lot of trouble getting into really tight mid-tide flats with someone else on the front because we were drafting like six inches and at that point why not have room and be on this skiff like shit i can draft six inches and get anywhere and not feel like i'm gonna die via oyster cuts then it says gator shell abs plastic combined with ballistics grade composites engineered to be six times tougher than traditional epoxy yeah when it doesn't flake off i mean 100 percent Supreme stability when under power, the rover is designed to lift the nose out of the water, providing a smooth ride and tight turning. And it did provide a smooth ride. It was nice, but like, wait till a weight comes. Like, just please be there for an Intracoastal Waterway or Elliott Cut or uh, Wando River, Remley's Point Wake. I mean, my buddy Ryan and I, and I have had some close calls getting to flash that way. It was just nuts.
definitely like nosed up on it in a weird way and I was like, this is super odd. Big set. Alright, can we actually get some picks for this time? So you dropping it in? Maybe. Yeah. This boat's just not big enough for the two of us. So, back to the hole. Um, this thing is not made like a skiff. That's one thing I really love about the Live Water Sports, and like, again, I'm unaffiliated, but this is just like, these are just facts to me, what I've experienced. The Live Water Sports skiff is designed like a skiff. 100% carbon fiber, it is made in a mold, and it's then capped. So you have all the elements of a skiff with skiff grade materials, not plastic coatings like it's just fiberglass or carbon fiber which the lid is and and uh gel coat you know like it has that really tough gel coat that gets stuff 100 percent tougher there's nothing tough about the rover once the gator shell is gone it just doesn't make sense and that's what i troubled with the whole time like when is this gator guard gonna come off and when am i gonna be like leaking water into this like weird epoxy hull. Anyway, the story goes on. The vertebrae mounts on top. It never really was of any use. I mean, the yak attack mounts on these live water sports, you can slide in so many attachments. I mean, I slide on like a transom to that thing, to the yak attack. There's nothing slide on with the vertebrae mounts. There was a couple that would fit like the pole and um, a fly rod, but you had to like strap them down. I had bungee cords that I cut and stapled to make little loops that would kind of let you just really wrench them down so hopefully they don't fly off. But we had a pole fly off and get caught in the water and stay on one vertebrae and it ended up breaking the pole in half um, just because there was so much load on one side and it really kind of like pivoted on the transom and one of the vertebrae mounts and then it just like snapped it was horrendous it was on the way back from a stoner river fishing excursion so um onto the motor so yes the motor allows you to get so much further and it's such a great thing for just paddling around and scouting and exploring but it also is heavy, like it was a hundred pound Tahatsu 9.9. .9. On the six horsepower, barely gets the thing on a plane. I wanted to be able to take two people fishing and kind of get them in skinny water. And that's why this whole thing kind of blew up in my face. I didn't really understand how much else was going on. But I bought mine used for an, an exceptional deal, pre-pandemic and pre-crazy boat market and that made it a little easier. But mine came with a 9.9 .9 Tahatsu and a small, maybe like three or four gallon tank. Now that three or four gallon tank was like another 20 or 25 pounds on top of a 100 pound motor. Now, that was one of the biggest things when I finally got to a spot. Now, tilting a 100 pound motor up after a long tiller ride to your spot and having to latch onto one of the few little holes that held the motor up was an absolute bitch. And then on top of that, after you're done pulling and making a ton of effort, getting the motor manually from the up position to down was an absolute backbreaker. And that was one of the main motivating factors that empowered me to put a smaller motor on this new micro skiff. Just because portability and minimalism and weight is way more important than power and speed and just random things that kind of become superficial once you get out to a spot and you're pulling a flat and you want to just be as quiet and as easy and as low energy as possible to pull. I ended up with a heavy boat. So 105 pounds for the hull, 100 pounds for the motor. I mean, the thing was 200 pounds without an angler, without the grab bar, without a cooler, without anything. Not to mention it was a $1,500 motor on top of a $3,500, now $4,500 hull. You're talking about six grand. I mean, that will buy a small skip, that'll buy a jumbo. 
this is all adding up to be like really tedious of a microscope. I hope you guys are seeing the picture that I'm communicating here. And I don't mean to rag on boat. This is just kind of like people need to know this as well as your marketing campaigns, like how much goes into these microscopes and how much shit is at your feet when you're, I mean, I couldn't throw a fly rod on that boat to save my life. I would snag so many things. I mean, the grab bar in the front, first of all, was great. It didn't really serve a purpose. It had a couple rod mounts that I didn't even use, but like holding on to that bar on a three foot tall like structure would actually make it more tippy. You have a flat board with a three foot pole coming up and you're using that as your stability. And it doesn't really make sense because that actually makes it way easier to tip, especially when you're changing positions. If you're going two man, which like is super hard as well. But like when you're trading spots from front to back, we had to like at the same time go around the grab bar, which was right in the way. It's just a headache. Like the grab bar just, it was a good idea, just like the execution was just so, so, so strange. Don't even think about paddling this thing. You have to pull it. This is 200 pounds plus anglers, which I mean, I'm 190 pounds. My friend who was on the skiff was 170 pounds. So that's, I mean, going on 360 pounds. I mean, this is insane. So we're talking about 360 plus 200 pounds to the motor and the boat. You're talking about 560 pounds that you're, that you're having to push around. Now you think like, okay, that's lighter than a regular skiff, but a regular skiff, you have room to breathe. You have stability and you have uh, dry storage, you know, like unless you have a cooler with an O-ring and unless you have, you know, a 110 pound frame and you're small, you ain't got any room and you better get ready to scrunch. So all this with a pretty hefty price tag. Like, Anyway, let's move on. So one of the biggest hassles was reversing. First of all, putting the thing into reverse, and then you have a small little area in the back between the two little twin holes that would absolutely drag the entire time. Now, I don't wanna say it was like completely worthless with reverse, but I mean, don't expect to really be able to maneuver that thing, especially onto a trailer. I mean, trailering was one of the most hard things to do, especially at Remleys or at Solagree or Folly or Landing. I mean, you're talking about busy landings where you have to get the boat on the trailer and get out of the water as fast as possible. It was not the case with the boat rover. And especially if you're gonna break the thing down, I mean, Jesus Christ, the motor is 100 pounds, the transom is 50 pounds, the, the hull itself is 100 pounds. You're talking about a lot of weight. So, so let's talk about speed and maneuverability. Now when we finally got up to speed, I'll admit the cruise was pretty nice. Other than your arm kind of hurting from tillers, which I never understand. I mean, I know bigger tillers have less pull to one side or another, but like that thing wore my arm out, especially with someone else on there. You have to like kind of offset the weight of two people um, just kind of like reaching back. I even put a carbon marine extension on and it just kind of like, it was weird. It was weird how, how dead my arm was. Um, with that said, the handling was poor. I mean, I constantly rode around feeling stressed out. When my girl was on the front, I was like, please don't kill her. When my dudes were on the front, I didn't really care about like really getting them like wet or anything. But I mean, we were soaked the entire time. Like, don't think anyone got out dry on any day unless it was butter slit glass and you know in fishing especially coastal areas it might start out that way in the morning but your ride home from the spot you better be ready for a cool off especially in the winter like when we were pulling those flats in the dead winter ryan fell off the thing thank god he didn't like get an oyster cut up the femoral artery it's crazy fishing always ended up being strained uh i would want to be on a platform or i would want to be kind of like high up and that left me super unstable. And then the pole, I would have to break the pole down and uh, it was like one of the extendo poles. Can't remember the company, but I would have to like fold it up, I'd have to unfold it every time and then I would have to strap it down. There was no like, kind of like fit it in between three uh, pole holders and just the tension holds it. It was like strap it down every single time or else that thing will break again. Firstly, 
I had some absolutely epic days on the river. Many a flat, many a oyster bed were stalked and successfully scored on with the rover. The two anglers, the thing can be an adequate fishing machine. Two skilled anglers, two balanced anglers, two anglers that know what they're doing. We went in grass flats, caught fish. We went on oyster beds and caught fish. We were on mud banks and caught fish. And no one fell in. Now, pulling some wintertide flats, Ryan fell in. First fall ever on the, on the rover. Check me out. Ryan's legs looking good. So lastly, on top of everything, I kind of just wanted, wanted to go through the price of everything. So on boat side, for the haul, it's $44.99. So $4,500 for the haul nowadays. This is entry level to get into the skiff brand new, unless you find one used, which they are around. So what I had was the grab rack. It's 220, it's the bar you grab onto. I had the bucket rack, and that's 220. Just basically steel tubing, meant to fit these little uh, inserts in the hull that also never drain. Don't ever think that you're gonna get your boat completely dry unless you flip it completely over. These things never drain. On top of that, I had a Kula, the five gallon, uh, which was 235. So it's already like $665 in accessories, 675. So on top of that, you have the motor. Let's see what a Tohatsu 9.9 .9 is nowadays. 15 inch shafts, 2,500. So that's 4,500 plus 600 plus 2,500. Also had a trailer that came with it. To, so to get this thing anywhere, like you're not hauling a 100, 100 pound motor. Uh, let's see, it was a Harbor Freight. Yep, that's it right there. Trailer's 400 bucks. That's $7,600 in just that alone. Not to mention the tiller extension, which was 200. So you're already up to almost $8,000. What I'm sitting in may or may not have been bought for right around there as well. And this is a 16 foot, I'm oh, sorry. And this is a 15 foot fiberglass skiff. So just like, that's what I was thinking this whole time. Anyway, the whole reason I made this was in preparation for a new video. And I'd like to just kind of like get this one out of the way and saying that the new micro skip is going to be sick. Appreciate you guys being patient for videos and I can't wait to release some content. So stay tuned. Glad you uh, stuck around and listened to the boat rover review because it is a pretty cool machine. It does have its opes and it also has its downs. So just something to think about, but stay tuned. See you on the next one. Let's get on the water. feet of water.